I am not a professional fly fisherman. I'm not even an avid fly fisherman. I'm a guy that started fly fishing maybe <laughs> a month or two ago. But I have learned a few things, not only by watching different videos online, but doing a whole lot of application. One of the applications I've found out is fly fishing equipment can be expensive. Of course, all fishing equipment can be expensive, but because of that, we all have our thrifty way of dealing with things. And I am a super, super cheapo individual. I don't like paying a lot of money for stuff if I don't have to. There's four different parts to a fly line. There's the backing, um, there's the fly line itself, there's the leader, and then there's the tippet. Now the backing goes on first and that's your extra line. Your fly line is the actual line that you use. It's like a tube that actually transfers the energy to the fly. The leader is the part from the end of the fly line to the tippet and the tippet's the short piece of line that is the thinnest at the end of the line that holds your fly. Fishing rods are not the same thickness all the way to the end of the rod. They actually taper down. They taper down for a reason. The biggest reason they taper down is it transfers energy to the end of the rod. If you have, say, a broomstick, and you take that broomstick and you bend it, it's going to break. The energy is collecting at the bend. It's got nowhere else to go because it's all the same diameter. Now, eventually, you can snap a fishing rod. But by tapering the rod, it allows the energy to transfer to the end of the rod so that it doesn't collect in one spot. Now, with a fly rod, it's no different. They are tapered as well, but they're tapered off at a longer range. They might start the same like a regular fishing rod, but they get really, really thin at the end. And what that does is it transfers energy to the end of the rod for when you're casting. So because when you're fly casting, you're building energy in the rod and transferring it to the fly line itself. Now, fly lines are naturally tapered from thick to thin. So why would you have a leader that wasn't doing the same thing? Starting off at a thicker point and coming to a thinner point to transfer that energy to the tippet, which can transfer the energy then to the fly. So with a leader, you have to have that energy transference to the end. So you have to have a tapered line. Now, there are a lot of videos online that teach you how to do how to tie a tapered line with like monofilament and those kind of things, floor or whatever. And the problem with those is twofold. Number one, that monofilament has a large memory and when it coils up in your rod or anything like that, it, it holds it really bad. That's the one downfall to it. The other downfall to using mono is that when you tie the knots, the knots are kind of thick and then you, in order to taper it, you have to use a line this, this long and then a line this long, and then a line this long, and then a line this long. You use different size lines to hit taper it down. So in all actuality, it's not one tapered line. It's actually segments of different size lines, which is okay, and it transfers energy pretty good, but it's still not one continuous taper. Now you can buy tapered lines that start at one thickness and they stretch them out by heat in different ways and go to another thinner thickness at the end. It's where you get your X, you know, your one X, your two X, your three, whatever sizes that you have. While those tapered leaders do work fantastic, they have their problems as well. Number one, when it's a little bit breezy or a little bit windy, which I mean, let's be honest, this is Florida. Florida's full of wind and because of that, I get a lot of wind knots. Now, wind knots happen when you don't get a real good loop or you get a decent loop and the wind picks it and makes it a bad loop. And it just literally ties your line into a knot. Some tapered leaders have an in, you know, integrated tibet in it, meaning it goes down to a certain point and it's that way for another three or four foot. And it gives you, you, you don't have to add a tippet to it. You just tie on your fly and you're done, which is awesome. But like I said, it is costly. This video is about doing something that is just as good, or in my opinion, even better, and saves you money. You are using materials and things you probably already got hanging around the house. Now, I did a bunch of research online. I looked at different types of jigs and different ways that folks had, had been doing it. Actually, there was only one that was enough to where I could figure out what they were doing. And even then it was kind of a really complicated jig. Because I live on a sailboat, I don't have room for all that. So I had to come up with something that I had room for. The first thing you're gonna need is some kind of tension device. 
it doesn't matter what it is as long as it gives good amount of resistance to pull your line tight. The next thing you're going to need is some kind of small weight. I use this old fishing lure. It stops the line from twisting while I'm furling it. The next thing you're going to need is something to cut the braid with. I suggest any kind of a sharp pocket knife. The sharper the knife or the sharper the edge, the less fluffy the ends are going to be where you cut them. Next up is a finger loop is what I call it. I made this one myself. I just used a pair of needle nose pliers and some stainless steel wire. Flip, flip, twirl, twirl, and then you're done. You're gonna need a drill. Doesn't matter what drill. It doesn't matter if it's an electric drill or a battery drill. It doesn't matter if it's one of them little bitty drills. As long as it's got a fairly high rate of speed to where you can actually twist it in a reasonable amount of time without having to do it for 15 minutes. A set of hook tools. I use this dentist tool and this loop tool that I got from a thrift store. You're gonna need a needle. Now on the needle, you're gonna need a really fine tip needle. It doesn't matter how long it is or how fat it is, it doesn't matter any of that, but the tip has to be very fine because you're gonna have to go through the braid with the needle. You're gonna need a swivel. It's what we use at the end to let it furl back on itself. This one, I just cut the loop on the end to where it opened up a little bit to where I could get the double loops in it. And last but not least, you're gonna need braid. This is cheap knockoff braid that I got at a uh, site online, it was wish.com, and I think I paid like three bucks for 500 yards of it. As far as the jig goes, all you need is a couple of clamps and a way to get hooks on them. You can drill holes in them, however you can do it. And then your tension device has to be able to hook up to the other one in some fashion. You wanna make sure these clamps are about 10 to 12 feet apart. That's gonna give you somewhere between a seven and nine foot leader, which is about what you want. The first thing we're going to do is you have to divide this up in four different basic sections. And what that's going to do is that's going to line up where your knots are going to be, where you tie your line to itself. The way that this works is you tie the braid to itself. Now what this does is it keeps your knots very, very small and very minimum, but it also allows you to tape. This, this is what cause, causes the taper. If you already don't have one of these for your needle, I suggest that you get it. The first thing you wanna do is put this through and thread your needle. I bring out a pretty long tag line on purpose because you're gonna have to, you're gonna have all that cut off anyway. So you come down, I don't know, maybe two foot. And the best way to do this, don't pull the line tight and then try to get between it because you gotta remember braid as it stretches, it tightens up. So you want the line loose and you just, I just put it between my fingers and I keep poking until it comes through the middle. There you go, just like that. Once it goes through, you take it off of the needle. Once you get it off of the needle, this is where the minimization comes. You wanna tie a half hitch. You do not wanna tie the half hitch on the two sides, but you wanna tie it on the one side. Remember, smaller is better and we wanna be minimal. So you just pull them tight, and there's your half hitch. And what that does is that creates your first loop. So that creates your first loop. The next step is wrapping. The first thing you're gonna do is come down and loop around your tensioner. You don't wanna pull it way out like this. You want it far enough back, but you want some tension on the line. Then you just wrap all the way back, To your first hook again and you come down to about three quarters of the way. Remember you don't want too much tension on it but you want some and you're going to come down to about three quarters of the way. Now you don't want to tie into the first wrap. You want to tie into your last wrap, the second wrap, because we want all of these weak points of this braid to be on different aspects, of, different parts of the line. Then all you have to do is cut your excess off. Remember, you can leave a really long tag in, you're gonna cut it off anyway. And then you're gonna tie in, of course, to the second line, not the line you tied in to first time, but the second one. I don't know, about three quarter of the way down, or better, about here. Okay, so here's our first strand. As you can tell, it's got two knots in it. All right, so our first strand has two knots in it. This is one. 
And the second one is about three quarters of the way down. Now remember, you tie off at that end, you come all the way down and then back and then back down to tie off to here. You don't go down and then come back and tie off. You should have right now in the middle, you should have three lines. This is where the second hook comes in. You run a new line to your second hook and do the same thing that you did on this one. You're gonna have one, two, three, four sections, four knots. All you're gonna do here is split the difference between here and here in this first knot. And you just go to about the middle. Then you do the same thing. You run it down to here, to your tensioner. You run around your tensioner. Back to the second hook. Put it around the second hook. And this, you're gonna split the difference down closer to the tensioner itself. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you pull this too much, the other one slacks off. If you pull this too much, they both slack off. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull it back and tighten these up, and you wanna just line this up to where they're both kind of exactly the same size, and then that is where you put your needle through. Now, if you miss it here on the needle a little bit, it's not that big a deal, because if you look, you can adjust this a little bit while it's through the braid. That's Do your half hitch, tighten it down both ways. Okay, so now we have two non-furled lines and they're fairly even and the same length. Now all you gotta do is cut off your tags and furl it up. You wanna cut these tags off as close as possible, but you also don't wanna go through your hitch either. One of the things I forgot to mention is that you're gonna have to have some kind of little hoop device. Again, this is stainless steel wire. I just use my needle nose, put a little triangle in it, works perfect. This is where my little finger hoop thing comes into play. All I do is take it, run the loop through so that it's in the small loop, and I just take it off of the hook. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna walk it over to our drill, hook it up to the drill, and then you're just gonna simply twist it in a clockwise rotation for about 30 seconds. If you look, you can see where it's already starting to come together, but right here where my finger is, it's not quite there. So we wanna keep going. Give it a couple more seconds, and now you can see it's nice and tight. This is where your hook tool or screwdriver or whatever it is you're gonna use on this step comes into play. All you're gonna do is simply take the hook tool, put it in through the loop, and then take it off of this. Then you're simply just gonna set this aside, still having some tension on it, off to the side. Then you take your little loop tool and you get the second one. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. What you're gonna need to do is as you do this, you're gonna need to pull this one back a little bit. See the difference between the two? One's back here, one's up here. You wanna pull this one to that one with this. So as you tighten this one up, this is gonna draw back as it pulls the tensioner to you. And if you look, they're almost pretty much identical. If you go too far, it's not a problem. Just reverse your drill and the tensioner will pull you back, pull the other one back as you reverse that. But you wanna go over it and then retension this back to be even. Once you get them even, you're simply gonna transfer the one on the hook tool onto your drill just like that. And then reverse the drill and go the other way for, I don't know, about the same amount of time, 30, 45 seconds. As you reverse this process, your tensioner will actually shorten because it'll start to almost unwind a little bit. What it's doing is it's basically unwinding on itself. They're actually furling against each other. And that will actually go two ways, two directions. It'll get shorter, the tensioner will get shorter, and then at one point, it'll actually start coming back towards you. Once it starts coming back towards you, you want it to go about three or four inches until you get a nice tight wrap. Once it's nice and tight, and the other end has come back to you and started tightening up, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna use your swivel. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna let 
the entire line relax. See, if you over tension it in reverse, it's not a big deal because the line is going to relax on its own. You furled both of them one way and now they've unfurled on each other going in reverse. So it's really tight and that's what you want. This is really tricky because you have to unfurl with your fingers to create somewhat of a gap so that you can get this little loop inside like that. And then all you do is you undo this. Focus. Now watch what happens when I let my finger off of it. It'll actually start tensioning up when I let, I'll pull tight and I'll, let, I'll loosen up. I'll pull tight and I'll loosen up. Tight, and you keep doing this until it actually stops spinning. What I do is I leave my drill sit there so when I pull on it the drill will actually just move a little bit and I'll pull and let it move a little bit and pull. After you do this about 30 times what happens is it actually is relaxed. Once it's relaxed now we have to tie the loops. Next you simply use your hoop tool and take it off of your swivel. You take your hoop tool and you push or you, you push this end back past your hoop tool and then you just take that and you create a loop to where this goes over the line. Now all this is doing is folding the loop back over itself, just like that, right there. Just folding it, it, the loop back over itself. Then this is where it gets tricky. Once you get your loop to where you want it to be, you move this back, you open the furl up right here, you take your hoop tool and get through the middle of the furl, like that. What you want to do is take the furl all the way back, and then you're going to take the loop itself and fold it on the inside like that. Then close the loop, and you're going to pull that through just like that. And what happens is this loop now comes down and tightens in on itself. Pull it tight, just like that. And there's your loop. Once you get your loop set, it's really easy. You simply just let it down and you do this for a couple of minutes. And all that does is release whatever tension might be left in the line. And there will be a little bit left. So if it starts to cool up on you, do it some more. What you want at the end is you want it to taper down to a smaller, smaller, smaller loop. One end of your leader will be nice and thick and the other end will be nice and thin. For all you actual fly fishing gurus, this is about one and one and a half X. So if you've got a better way of doing this, by all means, leave it down in the comments. If this helped you, like. If it's gonna help somebody else, share it. And if you wanna see more, by all means, come on back and see us by subscribing.